Hello physics students, welcome to our next topic which is gravity in which we're going to learn all the wonderful things that there are to learn about gravity. Not Gravity the movie which you've probably seen which is not a bad movie and it features of course these two people floating around in space and then having an accident. And although people might think ah it's called gravity because there's no gravity uh, in space there is still gravity. In fact in the universe there uh, would only be a couple of places where you could really say there's no gravity and that's simply because the gravitational fields would cancel each other out. Um, but gravity is something that's throughout the universe um, and we interact on a, on a daily basis and we feel its effects and we're going to learn about how it works and how we measure it and and how it interacts and makes things happen. Now gravity is of course one of the fundamental forces and it's one of the it's the one that's uh, not very well understood when you start going into the high end. We understand it at our, at our uh, college level and we understand it at our university level but once you go into the real high end physics it's a bit of a mystery. Um, it contrasts with the other fundamental forces in that it seems to act over vast different distances. Um, so now you can go places on Earth or near Earth and experience weightlessness, which is the sensation of not experiencing any force due to gravity, which is what they had in the movie. Um, although most of that movie was actually filmed on a plane like this, um, or else in a big studio with cables and things that were then. Uh, computerized out. But on this plane, which is a zero G plane, there's a big cavity in it uh, without any seats and it goes on a parabolic flight and you experience weightlessness and you can pay it's around five thousand dollars US to experience that in short uh, periods. Now if you're a famous physicist you get to go up there for free and they take lots of photos of you and hopefully you recognize who that is and how it works is you just go on a climb up and when you're the planes in this section here it's actually the, the passengers experience weightlessness and it lasts for about 22 seconds and otherwise you're experiencing greater than uh, Earth's gravitational field on the surface which is uh, would be called 1g and you're experiencing a slightly greater acceleration in the rest of the flight um, I think there's two of them, one in Europe and one in America, where people go on. Uh, they're used for science as well as just not for playing, and they were invented basically to test the early days of spacesuits. And before people actually went into space, they were they were used to uh, test weightlessness and how people coped with it and how people used equipment and stuff. Um, the other alternative to this was using big water tanks, and people. Uh, you practice doing their things in big water tanks but uh, the sensation of no gravity is uh, not replicated in a water tank and these guys are all testing stuff so there's some videos on our OneNote that you can watch and get a better idea of what you do up there um, they also perform occasionally minor surgery in, on these flights um, it has to be minor surgery because you only can do it in bursts of uh, 22 seconds but in this case they're just doing a small suture or something um, and they're just seeing how the whole operating system and tools and instruments and control of blood and all that sort of stuff works in a zero g environment because eventually people will be um, on the really long space flights to Mars um, may well have to do operations in zero g or near g zero g environments. Now we know about gravity because we can measure it, we can observe it, when you drop an apple you see gravity and that got people into wanting to actually measure it and they got more and more um, refined in the ability to measure it and the, this is an early um, galvometer or gal galvometer, I used to call them galvometers um, and this is a modern fully automated one uh, which you carry around has its own rechargeable battery and you just press some buttons and it measures gravity to about six decimal places so you would be reading 9.81 something 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 
and that would tell you what the gravitational field strength was in that area and people go around and map the gravitational field of the earth on the surface here's some people looking down this is a optical one which is an early model and you look down there and there'd be a very fine scale for you to look at um, and you, they take them all over the place this is down in Antarctica basically people are mapping the variation due to gravity because the gravity on the surface of the earth does measure when you measure it down to six decimal places and it, and it, and it changes because of the basically the rocks and the strata that uh, the earth's crust is, crust is made of um, how they work is usually the simplest technique is to have a tiny little quartz spring so a little spring made of quartz crystal so it's very delicate um, and a little counterbalance and the more that the gravitational field is the more the spring is stretched and then you have a micro scale and an eyepiece to look at the little micro scale and that was the earliest types and then they got more complicated and then they introduced lasers and different techniques and photo cells um, and there's a variety of techniques and they're all highly accurate now and modern ones that can measure weight even down to eight decimal places uh, using all different this one's a falling cube method um, and so they can measure very accurately the acceleration due to gravity um, they really took a big leap ahead because they wanted to take one up onto Mars and this is it here not Mars the moon <laughs> um, they wanted to take it to the moon and this is it being carried around by one of the astronauts so that the micro a lot of things came out of the space program and highly accurate mobile gravity meters was one of those things and this was it it was all condensed down into a very small pack um, and this was a pendulum based one now gravity meters can also be attached to planes this is a gravity meter and the end of a plane and it, that way you can ca cover a large surface area fairly quickly and this is a map of a section of New South Wales there's New South Wales there and this is the area that the plane was able to fly over and all the data was collated and then color coded and basically this is telling you what's below the surface in terms of density and these things are actually what are called uh, granitoids and these granitoids are where you get in this part of the world you get minerals deposited around them and so it was looking for minerals that aren't expressed on the surface and it's one of the exploration tools that are used by geologists in the next video we're going to look at the uh, effect measuring gravity had and how it introduced us to the concept of plate tectonics cheerio